Hi guys, welcome to the Tipsy Art Studio Quarantined Edition. I'm Brandy, and if you've painted with me before at the studio, welcome back. And if this is your first time here, we're super excited to be painting with you today. Today, I'm going to show you how to recreate sunset over lavender fields. Because this is pre-recorded, I'm going to be moving at an average pace. But if I'm moving too fast for you, feel free to pause the video so that you could catch up. Here's what you'll need to paint with me today. All right guys, let's get started. First, we're gonna take our number eight flat, or just a flat brush that you have. Make sure you get it damp first. Not too much water on there. If there's excess water, you wanna just dab that off on a paper towel. And the first thing we're going to do is go into um, our blue, our blue color, and we're going to find a little above halfway. So this would be about halfway on your canvas, and I'm going to go a little bit above there and find our horizon line. And don't worry about getting this straight or perfect or anything like that. These are just guidelines for right now. Using the same color, same brush, now we're going to outline our mountains in the background. So we'll start out with this one over here and just make it any way that you would like. And then we have one coming from this side. Make some different dips and peaks in there. And then we want one far off in the distance. Okay, and don't worry about getting it perfect. Again, these are just guidelines right now. Okay, with the same thing, we're going to find about the middle of our canvas, which would be roughly about here. Don't spend too much time overthinking this. And then we're going to draw our um, a, a big triangle. So it's going to, both lines are going to start from roughly about this point, and it's just going to come out at the bottom. The same thing with this side. It's going to make just a big triangle. Okay, now we'll start from this side and really close to the back here. Draw a line and it's going to come out away from this line as you go get further down. So very thin back here and wider down here. And you're gonna do the same thing here, very thin. But as you draw these, so this is getting further away. Your focal point will be here. These lines are getting further away. So as they're going further back here, they're also getting smaller. So this one was pretty large. This one was um, a little bit bigger. And then this one, it's getting slightly bigger or slightly smaller, I'm sorry. And then we just keep Going through this pattern all the way back here. You don't want to add too many lines, but it should be getting thinner. And these lines, don't worry about it. Like I said, just kind of roughing it out. And then we do the same thing on this side.
okay and now while you have the blue still on your brush you can just empty that into your furthest peak back there empty your brush Don't worry about anything right now. Nothing's going to be precise. Just getting all that paint out into that peak back there. And then your excess you can go ahead and rinse off. Okay, so you should have something that looks roughly about like that. And now we're going to start from the furthest thing away and work our way for the for forward. So the furthest thing away is going to be our sky and then our mountains, our mountain peaks. And then we'll work on this and then we'll put, we might put some trees back there. So the first thing that we're going to do for the sky is using the same brush we're going to go into our yellow here just make the really bright part of the sky here we're going to take it all around our mountain peak Try not to pick up that blue. If you do, don't worry about it. We'll fix it. We'll blend it in there somehow. All right. And now we're going to go into our purple. And at the very top here, I'm just gonna make a purple line all the way across both sides. And then go directly into your red. Don't worry about rinsing your brush. And blend those two together. Bring that red right into the purple. And back and forth motions. Blend it. You're just going to keep bringing that red down just a little bit further. With the red still on your brush, you could take a little bit of your yellow and bring that up into the red. And you're going to blend those colors right together.
You just keep going until you're satisfied with it, but don't want to work it too much. And then you'll start taking the paint off, and we don't want to do that. We can always come back and fix it later if we need to. Just make sure you have nice, even strokes. See how I'm starting to pick up some of the paint there? You can let that dry for a little bit and come back with to it if you're not completely satisfied with it. And I might, I'm not sure yet. So now we're gonna move on. And we already have some blue laid out here from emptying our brush. Now we're just going to add a little bit of variation there by taking a little bit of our white and mixing it right into our blue. So we should have, don't blend it too much, don't mix too much. And then just redefine your peaks up here. Some of that blue in there, just like that. Then you could take some of your darker blue, add some different variations in there. We don't want too much right now. We're just pretty much blocking in. So rinse your brush off. Now we're going to take some blue and some of our black. We want to mix a little bit darker blue. And block that in. You want to pay special attention to those peaks right about now. But everything else we're just blocking in. Not worry too much about it. Just blocking in. And we'll fix anything that we don't like later on. Okay, now we're going to take a little bit of the purple and some black, mix that together, and do the same thing with the last peak here. And again, paying special attention to those edges. And everything else is just blocked in. 
we'll redefine all of this later. Just blocking in. You want to just know where everything's going to be. And what color. Now with that same color on your brush, we're just going to empty out right in this triangle here. Just empty it out and mix up some more of that purple color. We want it really dark, so. Get it very dark and fill it in. Again, blocking in. We're not worried about too much right now. Okay, now you're going to skip this one. And fill in this one, same way, same color, just block it in. Skip another one, we'll do this one over here. I'm fixing my shape a little bit. And moving on to the other side. Not thinking too much about it and just filling it in, blocking in. All right, rinse your brush off. Now we're gonna mix up some black and green. So we want this also to be very dark. And you're gonna fill in the spaces in between. to be very dark. So this should fill in all of the empty spaces that we left there.
same thing on the other side just fill in all those spaces all those white spaces See, I'm not paying much attention to the lines. They're kind of just blurred. We don't really care about that at this point. All right, so you should have something that looks fairly similar to that. So give your brush a nice wash. And now we're gonna start adding the details. Now your sky should be dry right about now. We're really close to it. So what we're gonna do is put a little bit of white on our brush, same brush. Made sure I did this painting for people that have limited supplies at home. You only need a couple brushes. And then we're just gonna brighten up this spot right here in the sky. Brighten that up. It's gonna be the brightest spot in our sky. And now we're going to add some yellow back on top of that and just kind of blend that together, blend it out. And add our red here. Red and yellow is going to make our orange. You can make up an orange if you want. mixing that into the sky. Just taking some red, putting that into the sky a little more. Yellow, blending them together. more red and this will give you the different variations so I'm moving across the canvas so adding red and yellow to it I think I like that. I think I like that just how it is there. So I'm going to leave that. up some blue there so I'm just going to blend that out I'm going to leave it alone before I mess it up okay. 
Now we're going to move on to our peaks, our mountain tops. And we'll start out with this furthest one away. We can go to our blue and black mix that we had. We're just going to put some dark and light variations in here. Because the light part is over here, this is probably going to be our, our lightest part. So we'll put these darker areas back here. And then we can add more blue over here and some white, our blue and white mix. Just want a little bit of variation there. Give your brush a rinse if you're happy with it. And then we're going to move on to this peak over here. So we're going to go into our purple. And just start adding a purple to this, fixing our peaks if we want to fix it. Pick up a little bit of white in with our purple and just very lightly add some color variation here. So you can keep going back and forth with the black and purple mix. Until you get what you, you like there. So I'm going to add a little more white purple mix right around here our bright spot. Give your brush a rinse. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. So go into your blue. I still have my blue and black mix there. Just adding some dark colors. Some light variations. It should be darker around the bottom here. Just add that. Take our blue, a little bit of white. And then the light would be hitting it, probably hitting this area here. So maybe it's a little lighter there. Who knows? Whatever you want it to be. Pick up some of those colors and 
Just go with the flow of the, the peak. So if you're facing down, your brush should be going downward with it. Okay. And I like the way that those look, so I'm not going to mess with them too much. They're kind of off in the distance, so you don't want too much detail into them. But if you need to fix any edges, anything like that, just go ahead and do that. No big deal. You can always come back, and that's the good thing about this being pre-recorded, is you can always pause the video and work away with what you want to work on. But I am pretty happy with that, so I'm going to move on. Now we're going to be coming down to our lavender fields here. And this is where we are going to pick up our different brush. Make sure you rinse your brushes often and very well, especially when you're not using them. You don't want the acrylic dries pretty fast and you don't want that to dry on your brush. It will ruin your brush. All right, so now we're gonna to go to our number six flat and just get that damp and go directly into your purple. And you're gonna start at the side of your brush. So not flat like this. We're going to flip it to the side and you should have a pretty loaded brush. And you're just going to push on it. Press it up against there and just push. And it will give you, you want to go from left to right, right to left, whatever. But you want to make sure that we're getting the sides here. We want a pattern, but we want a lot of variation in this pattern. So, and then as you're coming forward, so this is really far away back here. So we don't, you know, it should be very blurry and small. So this further stuff further away will appear smaller. And as it gets closer to you, it should start getting bigger. And this will give you the illusion of depth. So as you're getting further, instead of just pressing, we're now pressing and pulling. And don't worry about it too much because we're going to come in and we're going to highlight this. But so the further or the closer that you get to you, the bigger these strokes should be. And then we want to do this on each of our purple lavender fields. So back in the back, really small, not a lot of detail there. And it's coming off at an angle. So now we're hitting it kind of at an angle. And I'm just pulling up this time instead of pulling down, but do it however you'd like. Up, down, it doesn't matter. And as it's coming closer towards me, my strokes are getting bigger. And we just do the same thing all the way back. Not much to it back there because it's so far away. And then as you get back here, there's a 
a lot less detail. So it's really far away. You do the same thing to the other side. Don't worry about it if you mess up, you can always come back and fix it. And I'll show you how. Sometimes it's best to leave it and then come back to it. There you go. So I give my brush a rinse, give that some time to dry, and we're going to move on to our green parts. We're going to take some green, mix it with just a little bit of yellow. And then we're going to go in here and I'm, now I'm using the flat side and I'm just making some um, like a swoopy motion. So I'm starting here and kind of curving in there. I don't want too much. So again, further back, shouldn't be that. You have to have, make, create the illusion of depth back there. We do the same thing on this side. Okay, so right now it's looking pretty good. Give that a rinse. And now we're just gonna take a little bit of that green and some black. Mix that together. Then we can create some trees in the background. So really far away, not a lot of detail at all. And we're gonna use the same brush, doing the same thing, just pressing our brush against there and making like circular shapes. Small and large circular shapes in the background. Okay, we want that to be very dark. So Want your black and your green together. And maybe I'll put one right about here. A set of trees. I 
can go anywhere you'd like, as many trees as you like, as little trees as you like, it's up to you. Put that back there. And then I'm gonna add a layer of grass back here. So if you had any white spaces back there, this is how you fill those in. And you know what? I think I'm going to put a tree here too, a pretty big one. So we don't want them all to be the same height, big, small. And then while you still have that color on your brush, because this is so far away, you can just go ahead and add a little bit of yellow to that. And it should lighten it up quite a bit. And we're gonna add some highlights into those trees back there. Not a lot, we don't wanna mess this up. So here and there, I'm gonna to touch it with that color should be a lighter green and wherever you think the light's going to hit so the light shining here most likely hit this side and from here probably hit the top there maybe some a little bit right there and we do that for this one too remember these are far away so we don't want a lot of details in there You can add a little more yellow if you'd like. And just brighten up just a couple areas, just a little bit. I think that one's pretty bright. And that should do it. Really far away. Okay, so now we've given this time this some time to dry. What we'll do is rinse off our brush, of course, and then we take a little bit of white, put it into our purple. And we're gonna add some highlights and we're gonna do the same thing, but we're only a little, using the very edge, the very tip of that and lightly going through and highlighting some of these areas. I wanna make sure that we maintain the depth by the variations of color here. So we have to have those dark spots. Don't lose those dark spots. Highlight some of those lavender plants there. Not too much. This will help us break it up too if we've went a little overboard. Like I think I might have. Helps break that up as well. So just use that really light color. And when you get further back, remember you, you really don't want a lot of detail that's pretty far away. So don't put a lot of thought into it, just top of these, highlight some of those. less back there and do the same thing to this side
rinse your brush off. And now we're going to do the same thing to our green areas here. We're going to add a little more yellow to our green. Should have a pretty, and add a little bit of white in there too, just a touch. So it should be pretty light. And then we'll go through and give a little highlight to these. Yeah, not too much. Same motion that we had last time. You know, just want a little touch of highlight here and there. Want those variations of dark, don't lose that. anything back there. And give your brush a good rinse. Look at that, pretty much done. If you'd like to, you could go back and work on anything that you, you see. Might need a little touch up. I have a couple white areas showing. Just going in with my black, darkening those up. But there you have it. You've just painted lavender fields. Thank you guys so much for painting with me. Again, if you liked what we did here and you want to see more of this, please subscribe to our channel and comment down below. If you have any suggestions, uh, this is our very first time doing this, so if you have any suggestions for us, please leave those in the comments down below, and we look forward to painting with you again. Enjoy, guys!